Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. So today is the second video part 2 of the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner Exam Question and Answer Series. In the first video we studied and uh, understood the first 10 questions in this series. Today we will also study and I will try to explain uh, the next 10 questions. So without further ado let's get started. So the question number one is that a company plans to use an Amazon Snowball Edge device to transfer files to the AWS cloud. Which activity activities related to a Snowball Edge device are available to the company at no cost? So here uh, there is a company that want to transfer files to the AWS cloud using the Amazon Snowball Edge device. So what are the activities that the customer can do without uh, incurring any cost so the options are daily use of the snowball edge uh, appliance after 10 days option two is use of the snowball edge appliance for a 10 day period option three is the transfer of data from the snowball edge appliance into amazon s3 and the last option is the transfer of data out of Amazon S3 and to the Snowball Edge device. And the correct option is that the customer can transfer data from the Snowball Edge device, uh, Edge appli appliance into Amazon S3 storage. So what is uh, the uh, Snowball Edge device? It is basically a physical device that you can use in your uh, local area network and using this device you can uh, transfer your files from your local storage to the AWS S3 bucket. So, and this uh, process does not involve any cost transferring files from your transferring data from your local storage to AWS using the Snowball Edge device involve no cost. The question number two is that a company wants to run a no SQL database on Amazon EC2 instances. What task is responsibility of the AWS in this scenario? So here we are, uh, the cloud is basically a shared responsibility model. Some responsibilities are related to the customer while some are uh, responsibilities are that of the cloud provider such as AWS. So here we are talking about a customer that wants to run a database, no SQL database. So what are the cloud provider responsibilities? And the options are, option one is maintain high availability at the database layer. Option two is patch the physical infrastructure that hosts the EC2 instances. Option three is update the guest operating system of the EC2 instances. And the last option is configure the security group firewall. So the correct option is that the cloud provider or AWS in that case is responsible to patch the physical infrastructure that hosts the EC2 instances, while rest all are, are the responsibility of the customer. So here I have made a table uh, to clear this concept further. So in cloud model particularly the IaaS infrastructure uh, as a service. The cloud provider or AWS is responsible for patching of physical infrastructure such as servers, router switches and this also include the hypervisor. We can also call the hypervisor as the host OS while the customer is responsible for updating the guest OS. This is host OS Cloud provider is responsible for updating of host OS while customer is responsible for updating of the guest OS. And then again, the fault tolerance at infrastructure level or at physical level, such as availability zone, clustering of physical servers and network devices. This is also the responsibility of AWS. While maintaining the high availability at the database layer that customer wants to install is the responsibility of the customer. Similarly, the physical security of the data center, including, including the uh, physical infrastructure, such as server network devices, it's, it is the responsibility of cloud provider, while the uh, control or the uh, security control 
of the web application or in that case the database through any security measure such as WAF is also the responsibility of the customer. Question number three is that which option is a customer responsibility when using Amazon DynamoDB under the AWS shared responsibility model? So when using the Amazon uh, DynamoDB, what are the customer responsibilities and the optional are patching of DynamoDB. Option two is physical security of DynamoDB. Option three is access to DynamoDB table and option four is encryption of data at rest in DynamoDB. So again, since the customer is using uh, Dynamo, he must have access to the table and, uh, and he can play with the database table. So this is his responsibility to manage the uh, tables uh, and the data inside the table. And the encryption of data inside the database are also known as data at rest. It is also the responsibility of the customer. So the management of keys, uh, the encryption of the data and uh, the rotation and all uh, management related to the encryption keys is the responsibility of the customer. While the patching and the physical security of database is the responsibility of AWS or cloud service provider. So what is DynamoDB? Amazon DynamoDB is a fully managed key value no SQL database designed to run high performance applications at any scale. Question number four is that a company is running and managing its own Docker environment on Amazon EC2 instances. The company wants an alternative to help manage cluster size, scheduling and environment maintenance which AWS service meets these requirements. And options are Amazon RDS, option B is AWS Lambda, option C is AWS Athena and option D is AWS Fargate and the correct option is AWS Fargate. So what is AWS Fargate? AWS Fargate is basically a technology that you can use with Amazon uh, ECS to run containers without having to or without having to worry about management of servers or cluster of Amazon EC2 instances. Question number five is that which AWS service or tools can be used to identify right sizing opportunities for Amazon EC2 instances and we have to choose two options and the options are option A is AWS billing collector, option B is AWS cost explorer, option C is AWS code guru and option D is AWS compute optimizer. And the correct option, options are the AWS Cost Explorer and the AWS Compute Optimizer. So uh, using these two tools, you, we can uh, right size the Amazon EC2 instances. So what is the right sizing? Right sizing is the process of matching instance types and sizes to your workload performance and capacity requirement at the lowest possible so it means that utilizing the uh, resources up to fullest uh, capacity or uh, we may also call it that optimum utilization of resources, not underutilizing it or not overutilizing it, just according to the performance requirement. And this can be done through these two tools, the cost explorer and the compute optimizer. Question number six is that which one, which of the following are two benefits of using AWS Trusted Advisor. So this is another tool or service of Amazon AWS Trusted Advisor and it can be used. The options are option A is creating and rotating encryption keys. Option B is detecting and detecting underutilized resources to, to save cost. Option C is improving security by proactively monitoring the AWS environment. And option D is implementing enforced tagging across AWS resources. And the correct option are that we can use AWS Trusted Advisor to detect un, uh, underutilized resources to save costs. And we can also use it to improve the security by proactively monitoring the AWS environment. So this is uh, a typical dashboard of AWS Trusted Advisor. And here we can see that we can uh, 
use the cost related metrics we can optimize the cost similarly uh, we can also use it for the security uh, related metrics and optimization and again the availability and performance related metrics so trusted uh, ms aws trusted advisor gives gives us these functions or services question number 7 is which of the following is an advantage that user will experience when they move on premise workload to the aws cloud so this is a typical uh, advantage uh, the question is asking about the typical advantage of moving from on premise to the cloud it can this question hold for any cloud not specifically to aws and the options are provide discounts that are identical to discount from hardware providers option b is elimination of expenses for running and maintaining data centers option c is distribution of all operational controls to aws and the last option d is elimination of operational expenses and the correct option is elimination of expenses for running and maintaining data center so the cloud uh, basically provide provide us with two benefits one is capex these are the two terms that are used uh, capex and this uh, other is uh, opex basically o p e x so capex is the capital expenditure this is the uh, expenditure that you uh, incur initially when uh, you procure the hardware you build your data center and all that that in all the capital expenditure that is uh, basically a one time expenditure uh, during initial installation of your data center and then the operational expenditure opex is the ongoing maintenance of your data center so the cloud uh, uh, provides the benefit of eliminating these both expenses the option d is also correct but it is not the only uh, this is only talking about the opex while well, the this option it uh, includes both the opex as well as the capex so this is the correct option that the cloud eliminate the expenses of running and maintaining data center question number 80 that a company is using a central data platform to manage multiple types of data for its customers the company wants to use aws service to discover transform and visualize the data which combination of two aws services should the company use to meet these requirements and the options are aws glue option b is amazon redshift option c is amazon quicksight and option d is amazon elastic file system and the correct options are amazon glue and amazon quicksight so using these two uh, tools or these two services the customer can discover transform and visualize data question number 9 is that which component of the aws global infrastructure is made up of one or more discrete discrete data center that have the redundant power networking and connectivity and the uh, options are aws support AWS Launch Wizard, AWS Managed Services, and AWS Professional Services. So I think uh, I have wrongly typed this question because this option doesn't uh, relate to this question. In fact, this uh, question is related to the availability zone. We already studied this in the first video. availability zone the availability zone provides it is a global infrastructure that provide with discrete data centers that have this uh, redundant power networking and connectivity so let's suppose we have different availability zone let's say this is availability zone 1 this is uh, availability zone 2 and this is availability zone 3 this is not the exact nomenclature that amazon use and if a customer let's suppose a customer one is here he may be connected to this one 
and uh, if uh, in case of the disaster this availability zone uh, this data center is no longer available then the customer is routed to the next availability zone so this gives us uh, redundancy and availability so let's get to the next question so the aws professional services the question was basically uh, the question that i didn't uh, write here it was related to the aws professional services so aws professional services are different it is uh, aws marketplace marketplace where you can search and buy different uh, aws services such as if you want to migrate your on premise applications to the cloud then you can uh, consult and you can search for professional services and you can use these services to migrate your application or data to the cloud similarly if you want uh, application uh, sim uh, sorry training you can also search for the training related services using this aws professional services so this question and these options do not make but uh, i still uh, try to explain you that uh, what is the AWS professional services and this question is related to the availability zone. So yes, this is the professional services available in, Amazon, uh, in um, AWS marketplace enable you to find and buy assessment implementation. Implementation means the migration support, manage services and training for third party software and building on AWS. And the last question is that a developer wants to deploy an application quickly on AWS without manually creating the required resources. Which AWS service will meet these requirements? So uh, a developer wants to deploy an application, but he does not want to manage the uh, resources such as the compute or e EC2 instances. And the options are AWS Elastic Beanstalk, Amazon EC2, AWS Coldwell, or Amazon Personalized. And the correct option is AWS Elastic Beanstalk. So this is typically related to the development. A developer can quickly use this uh, service without uh, requirement of creating the resources to deploy his application. And this is uh, some of the benefit of this uh, AWS Elastic Beanstalk that it is easy to start with. You can just uh, deploy your application our code without the need of managing or creating resources it has the auto scaling feature developers productivity customization it is cost effective and it gives easy management so that's all for today uh, if you like the video so please subscribe and uh, uh, like my videos and click on the bell icon so that you get the notification of the upcoming videos uh, bye for now and thank you